Hey everybody, Leslie here, and first of all, I want to apologize. I know I've gone completely AWOL for a few months. I've been very, very busy with my company, Oxford HealthSpan, working on a spermidine supplement called Primidine, so that has been really taking a lot of my time. But meanwhile, I don't know what's happened. Everybody is interested in gray hair um, and how to reverse it, so I just keep getting more and more subscribers and consequently more and more questions. And I do apologize if I haven't gotten to your specific question, I have just been inundated. That would be a job in and of itself to answer all the questions I get. Um, as a result, I'm trying to use these videos as a way to answer some of those questions. And one question that I get repeatedly is not to do with necessarily gray hair, but more to do with how to reverse something called alopecia areata. And that's where you actually lose your hair either in patches or you might um, lose it uh, completely throughout the body. That would mean no eyebrows either, no hair on your scalp, no hair on your body. That's known as alopecia uh, areata universalis. And then alopecia areata totalis is where you lose it on your scalp. So I started looking into this. I mean, I really feel for those individuals who have this because um, although only 2% of the population suffer from alopecia areata, there really aren't wonderful treatments yet. It is considered an autoimmune disease. As many of you know, I'm an autoimmune survivor and uh, having been diagnosed with three different autoimmune diseases, I know how distressing it is, especially when your medical professional says, sorry, there's really nothing we can do. So I um, thought I would just take a deep dive on alopecia areata and see if there were indeed any solutions out there that might be accessible to individuals. And I found a really exciting one, which is our old friend, vitamin D. Those of you who have watched my other videos will know I did a couple of videos on how some of you viewers have actually reversed your premature gray hair by increasing your vitamin D intake and reversing a deficient vitamin D status. So when I saw these articles, linking alopecia areata with low vitamin D, I thought, hmm, this is interesting. There must be some connection also with gray hair. And so I just wanted to share these studies with you because they are fascinating. And my favorite study is this one out of uh, a university in China, and it is titled um, Vitamin D and Alopecia Areata, Possible Roles in Pathogenesis and Potential Implications for Therapy. The reason why this is really interesting is because they go through the seven causes that they think. They've identified seven causes for alopecia. And um, what's so interesting is that they discuss the possible roles of vitamin D in the pathogenesis. So um, we'll just start with the first one, which is loss of what they call immune privilege in the hair follicle. And I'll show you some diagrams on how this happens. I'm not going to go deeply into some of these other reasons, uh, such as autoreactive effector T cells and mast cells, Third one, uh, natural killer group two, membrane depositive cytotoxic T cells, um, regulatory T cells, immune checkpoints. I'm not gonna talk about those because basically um, they all have to do uh, with an immunological malfunction at the hair follicle and how vitamin D might have a role in restoring um, that immune privilege that they talk about as the first reason, they restore immune privilege and balance to the hair follicle. The final reason that they give for alopecia is oxidative stress. Now you may remember from my other videos that oxidative stress can also lead to premature gray hair. And um, it's super interesting that because when it comes to oxidative stress, they say that it is a common feature in autoimmune disease. 
uh, and is a result of inadequate antioxidant defense or overproduction of reactive oxygen species, ROS. Now, if you remember from some of my other videos, um, I've talked about how the body has a natural mechanism for actually um, fighting against too much reactive oxygen species. And that would be with superoxide dismutase, with catalase, and with our old friend glutathione. These are all part of glutathione peroxidase. And um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of liposomal glutathione. So that was very interesting to me because the mechanism of action reminds me of premature gray hair. And what is so incredible is that this article actually talks about vitamin D as an antioxidant. And I'll show this paper um, separately so you can take a look at that. Uh, it says, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trials performed in patients with now get this, these are comorbidities, major depressive disorder, patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, patients in maintenance methadone treatment, so they're addicts, and patients with diabetic foot ulcer, these are the comorbidities for this alopecia, demonstrated that vitamin D intake resulted in significantly increasing uh, total antioxidant activity and glutathione levels and significant decreases in oxidative stress compared with placebo. I've never seen anything saying that vitamin D intake actually increases glutathione before. So I think that definitely vitamin D levels need to be assessed in all of us in order to make sure that we uh, maintain good immune function, not just in the hair follicles, but obviously during a pandemic, we want that throughout our body, right? But um, it is absolutely astonishing to me that it increases glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant. So many of you have said, gee, liposomal glutathione is terribly expensive. What other things can I do? And I've suggested N-acetylcysteine or NAC, but as many of you know, the FDA has now said, well, in 1963, we classed that as a drug. So we're now pulling this from the shelves, even though aspirin is also classed as a drug and still sold on Amazon. But um, what's What's uh, interesting is that if you can't get NAC anymore, you could potentially use vitamin D to increase your glutathione levels. So I did not know that. I thought that was absolutely fascinating. And uh, another paper, this one out of Korea, talks about how autoimmune, uh, sorry, alopecia areata subjects had lower serum 25 hydroxy D levels and vitamin D deficiency was highly prevalent compared to non-alopecia controls. So again, we're demonstrating a link between low vitamin D status and alopecia areata. Um, another thing I wanted to show you was this study, which was about a topical treatment that you could actually use to improve alopecia areata. So, this is something called calcipotriol. And uh, sometimes when you just increase vitamin D status, you can lead to hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the body. So calcipotriol is actually an analog and uh, does not lead to hoarding of calcium. Uh, actually, I, I believe that it, uh, that it has um, much less calcium hoarding, maybe one one hundredth, and therefore might be really good with no side effects. You could use this. Uh, obviously, too much calcium hard on the kidneys. So uh, calcipotriol uh, says here it may serve as a safe and effective treatment option in mild to moderate patchy alopecia areata. Um, and what they did here was they applied this calcipotriol cream to the patches. Again, this is a vitamin D analog. And at week 12, it says the total response was achieved in 69.2% of the patients. 
That is incredible. So they experienced hair regrowth in over 50% of, um, sorry, hair regrowth was observed in 75% of patients. That is, that's pretty phenomenal. Now, how do you know if you have low vitamin D status and if this is your root cause? And you may have already gone to your doctor and done a test, um, but I wanna make sure that you've actually had the right vitamin D test. You may think that vitamin D tests are vitamin D tests. Unfortunately, they're not. So there are actually two types of vitamin D that you can measure for. One, and that would be in the blood serum. One is called 125. Um, vitamin D and because 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is the active form of vitamin D many practitioners think that measuring 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is an accurate means to estimate vitamin D stores unfortunately not true no what actually is the right thing to measure is serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels so this is um, this is an interesting, um, this is quite an interesting recommendation that actually comes from the Endocrine Society guidelines of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists. So it's very important, in particular, if you're going to your general practitioner who may not be an endocrinologist and may not be reading these updates that are sent out to all endocrinologists on what the proper test is to check for vitamin D deficiency. So your doctor may have tested for 125 dihydroxy vitamin D deficiency and said, oh, it actually looks fine, when in fact you might be severely deficient. So that is, um, that is the update for today. Um, for those of you who've sent me in those many questions, either in the forums or on Instagram or to my personal email address, I hope that that gives you um, an option to look into. Calcipotriol is the topical vitamin D analog cream that you can apply in particular to patchy uh, alopecia areata to see if that helps resolve your uh, your patch and regrows uh, your hair. And oh, one last thing. I had a thought on why this is happening. And by the way, most of the people who have written to me saying that they are experiencing this are individuals who are people of color and uh, or they are uh, half um, like me and have said they don't know why this is happening. Well, if you think about the fact that we no longer go outside very much. Those of us of color who have slightly different type of skin, we need very high spectrum of light in order to synthesize vitamin D. And we spend all our time in front of computer screens, right? Indoors, and especially during lockdown. So where are we getting the opportunity to synthesize vitamin D in our skin? We just aren't. And modern life does not make that easier, right? So um, I encourage everyone, in particular those of you who are um, you know, mixed race or people of color, please, please do get your vitamin D levels checked, make sure it's the right test that you're getting checked. And then if you are suffering from alopecia, do consider that calcipotriol cream. I hope this has been of use to you. If you've got suggestions for other videos you want me to do, please let me know. Yes, you can leave questions in the comments below. I will do my best to get to you as you know, it has taken me some months to get back to some of you, and I do apologize for that, but I will try and gather everybody's questions and turn them into videos like this for the benefit of everyone. Thanks again so much for listening and see you next time.